What's up guys? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. As you can clearly see, Than is not hosting this building update, so I will be filling in for him today because he is sick. Which reminds me, I should probably be getting into character for this, so hold on real quick. Well, all right, so this looks better. Um, let's get on with it, shall we? Okay, so first thing on our list of things to talk about is actually going to be our species-specific show tanks that are situated on either side of this aisle. In our last video, both of these probably didn't have water in them or even had lighting. So that is one big thing that is going on with these right now is both of these are plumbed in and have water as well as lighting fixtures over the top of both of them. As of what we're going to be putting in these tanks, it's kind of a blank slate right now because there's so many options that we can use for these type of tanks. Um, Than did mention something to me about possibly doing uh, an anemone tank for this one specifically, mainly because we have a ginormous Colorado sunburst bubble tip anemone next door in the greenhouse that after quarantining it will do really well over here. So that's the idea for that one. For the other one, we're still kind of thinking about it, but hopefully we'll be able to figure something out soon because these tanks are almost done. So we can get something started then. So. That's it for these. Let's move on to our next item on our list. All right, so this is our new fish quarantining system. As you can see, it's rather large. Um, <laughs> so we've just very recently put this in as well as uh, filled it up with water. That This all has been happening fairly quickly and fairly recently. The main reasoning behind us wanting to start quarantining our fish, which should be obvious, you should be quarantining your fish, but it's not something we always really thought about, uh, was because we've had issues in the past where we would bring in new fish, not really quarantine them, and not only did the fish from the new shipment start getting sick, but then our existing fish that we had before that shipment would also start getting sick and we would lose a lot of fish. So, easiest way to get rid of that problem, just start quarantining your fish. So, this has been our solution, and honestly, it's a pretty good looking solution. This is pretty nice looking. This quarantining system is made up of six tanks. We have two 30 gallon tanks on top, two 40 gallon tanks in the middle and two 50 gallon tanks here on the bottom. So that will be able to house quite a bit of fish. And then the structure that the tanks are sitting on is actually made out of wood that we have painted white. All right, so getting a closer look at these tanks, you can actually see that each tank has its own separate filtration, heating, and UV happening. That's just because um, we want to be able to take in smaller batches of fish at different times and so this sort of helps with that as well as if we have to give certain fish medication because they're kind of getting sick uh, we can do that with some of the fish in one tank and have other fish not be affected by that certain medication so that's the reasoning why we have separate everything for that just to kind of cover our bases and hope that none of our fish die now in a perfect world we would rather have our fish not get sick at all. The riskiest part about getting fish from a wholesaler is that first 48 hours because sometimes you don't realize that they're sick. At one minute they're fine, the next they could be dead. So we would rather pay double or triple for places that quarantine really well and then also quarantine ourselves, but in a perfect world that doesn't always happen. And so fish do get sick, which is why, again, we have all our filtration UV and heating split up between our, these multiple tanks. And then moving on to the lighting on each of these tanks. Each of these tanks has its own separate light strip and you may be able to tell that it's more situated towards the front of the tank more than the back or the middle of the tank. That's just because we want to see the fish even when they're up close just so we can observe them and make sure they aren't sick, don't have any parasites, that sort of thing. Now we're gonna go back behind here and show you guys where all of that stuff plugs in. <laughs> okay, so coming back here, it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, so bear with me. We have two 72 inch power strips that are 
built into the back of this structure, but we've actually mounted them so they're slightly spaced away from the structure and not pressed up against it. This is because if water drips from the tanks, it won't drip directly onto the power strip and cause more problems with electrical. And so everything from lights to filters are all gonna be plugged in back here. Another part of the stand I wanna pay attention to is the bottom of the stand. The bottom of the stand actually has a type one PVC bottom instead of the wood bottom. So if there are any spills onto the floor, it won't soak up into the wood and cause problems later down the road. All right, so next order of business on our list is the new floating workstation. And what exactly do I mean by floating workstation? I mean, it literally has no legs. It's attached to the wall. <laughs> Thayne's pretty crazy when it comes to areas of the building that are going to be getting a lot of activity. So that's why we kind of went all out for this first workstation in the building. Another thing that came into play when we were deciding how to build this, we wanted something that was gonna have really good structural integrity, mainly because it's a floating desk and we're gonna be putting a lot of pressure on it when there's not legs there to support it. What we actually ended up doing was choosing an aluminum frame that's the same exact ones that we use for a lot of our aquariums here. So if you've seen in previous videos, the stands that we've built for our other aquariums, it's made out of the exact same materials as those stands. So you know that it's gonna be able to hold quite a bit. To show how much you can hold, I actually ended up laying on top of the desk right after we build it just to see how much it could hold up. And it can hold up me. Granted, that's not saying a lot, but I feel like if it can hold up me, it can hold up anything, you know? When it came to the custom building of this new desk space, we wanted something that was going to be perfect for standing and sitting, just so that way you could have a wide range of movement and not be uncomfortable no matter how you like to work. So that way, if you're not sitting and you normally like standing when you work, you're not like hunched over like a gremlin working on whatever you're working on. Then the last custom element we had built for this desk is actually this custom ABS top. The custom ABS top has a cutout specifically made for our Griffin diamond bandsaw that we have sitting right here. We're still trying to figure out the details in regards to connecting this little section and the sink over here, but that's still a work in progress and we'll be figuring that out pretty soon. And then the final touch for this desk is actually gonna be the lighting. The first major light is actually gonna be this long strip light that we have going across the top. And the other one, we actually have a Kessel light uh, situated over on the corner by the bandsaw that we're gonna be able to use as well. So that's all I have on the custom desk. Now let's talk about everything happening in the greenhouse next door. So people always keep asking us, once the new building's finished, are you just gonna completely demolish the greenhouse? <laughs> Hard no. That's nowhere near what is gonna be happening to the greenhouse. If anything, we've gotten some big improvements happening right now. Right, so the first new thing happening in the greenhouse is going to be our first boiler. This boiler is actually going to be heating the floor and keeping the floor warm in the greenhouse. 
This is more so a safety precaution just in case the two main heaters in the new building fail for some reason. The two big heaters in the new building are actually pretty redundant and heat all of the tanks in the new building as well as in the greenhouse by themselves. So if those two fail, we now have the boiler in the greenhouse to kind of help out over there. And then we also have a second boiler that got put in. And this boiler is actually going to be for the new sinks that we got put in. The new sinks, just like the floating desk that we have here in the new building, is actually floating as well. And so that frees up a lot of leg room that the legs would have taken up before with the old sinks. And so now we have new ones without legs that look a lot cleaner and allow for more storage space. Also the plumbing down here recently was from like the 2007 era and getting a lot of those rusted valves and fixtures swapped out for brand new ones is definitely a reassuring feeling. Another reassuring feeling is knowing that we now have hot water in the greenhouse because the second boiler hooked up to the sinks. If you could believe it, before now, we just had freezing cold water in the winter. And I say freezing, it's more like 50 degree water, but in the winter, it definitely feels like your hands are freezing off. So having hot water in the greenhouse finally is a huge luxury. All right, so that's all the new updates that we have going on at Tidal Gardens. Despite Than being the guy that normally does the building updates, I actually had a really fun time doing that and wearing a suit for the first time in forever. So I hope you guys had a good time with me as a fill-in for Than. Don't worry though, he'll be back again for the next building update, I promise. <laughs> so until next time, happy reefing.